This morning, I'm gonna be taking you through week 16 of our fantastic series, Hope is Alive. Have you been practicing the sign since I last saw you? Can you join in with me? I hope so anyway. Hope is alive. One more time. Hope is alive. Brilliant. Well done, everybody. I hope you had a fantastic time with Katie last week. Um, this week, I'm going to be taking you through another story, another character from the Bible who held on to hope even when things got tough. And believe me, things got pretty tough for him. His name's Peter, and I'll take you through the teaching notes later in the, in the video. So I'm going to start off by talking you through my game ideas for this week. My first idea was maybe you would like to gather your family together or some friends and have a game of stuck in the mud. So you have two teams and one team's on it and the other team's trying to escape. If you get touched on the shoulder or below, you have to stand like this and wait for someone to come and run under your arm and set you free again. It's good fun, I used to love playing that game. Or I thought I'd run you through a couple of simple um, escape room ideas. So my first one was you could write the letters from a phrase. I've used post-it notes and then muddle them all up and give someone a certain amount of time to try and work out what the phrase was. Or I thought you could use some Lego and build a sequence a bit like this and then give another person a bowl. Oh, can you see without me tipping them on the floor? With the matching pieces in the bowl and they have a certain amount of time to build um, the exact same pieces in the exact same places. Or if you want to make it a little bit more complicated, you could make some shapes with Lego like this and then give them a bowl and they have to try and recreate the shapes that you've made using the Lego pieces in a certain amount of time, obviously, to escape the room. Or the last one you're going to need my notes for. So I've done some Bible references. Oh, and you'll need a Bible as well and maybe a grown-up to help you. Um, so I've put some Bible references, all from the same book, so that you don't have to go all the way through the Bible. Um, and then you have to find a verse and count the words, and then see if you can work out what the phrase is that I've put, found the words for. So I'm gonna give you a chance now to go and play one of those games, and then take a listen to Joyce, reading the story this week about Peter and then come back and I'll take you through the teaching notes. Hi real life kids and youth my name is Joyce and I'm going to be reading to you the story for this morning from the book of Acts chapter 12. About that time King Herod Agrippa began to persecute some believers in the church. He had the Apostle James, John's brother, killed with a sword. When Herod saw how much this pleased the Jewish leaders, he arrested Peter during the Passover celebration and imprisoned him, placing him under the guard of four squads of four soldiers each. Herod's intention was to bring Peter out for public trial after the Passover. But while Peter was in prison, the church prayed very earnestly for him. The night before Peter was to be placed on trial, he was asleep, chained between two soldiers with others standing guard at the prison gate. Suddenly, there was a bright light in the cell and an angel of the Lord stood before Peter. The angel tapped him on the side to awaken him and said, quick, get up, and the chains fell off his wrists. Then the angel told him, get dressed and put on your sandals. And he did, 
Now put on your coat and follow me, the angel ordered. So Peter left the cell following the angel, but all the time he thought it was a vision. He didn't realise it was actually happening. They passed the first and second guard posts and came to the iron gate to the street and this opened to them all by itself. So they passed through and started walking down the street when the angel suddenly left him. Peter finally realised what had happened. It's really true, he said to himself. The Lord has sent his angel and saved me from Herod and from what the Jews were hoping to do to me. Good morning, Real Life Youth. I'm Sarah and I'm going to be taking you through the teaching notes this morning. Uh, I hope you've had a chance to maybe play one of the games. I thought you might like some of the escape room ones. So maybe the ones where you had to look up verses and find words in the Bible to make a phrase or the more complicated kind of Lego one where you have to make a sequence of shapes and someone else, challenge someone else to make the same. I also hope that you've had chance to listen to the story about Peter read to us by Joyce this morning. If you haven't, just pause me right here and then go and take a listen and come back. Okay, so um, Peter was one of Jesus's disciples and he was the guy who, when Jesus was arrested, um, was so scared of what might happen that he actually denied that he knew Jesus three times. When we meet him again here in Acts, he is utterly transformed from the man that he was. He's no longer fearful um, and instead is bravely and boldly speaking of Jesus and preaching about him. And um, three things, I think, have happened that have totally changed that. One, he's seen Jesus um, risen from the dead and ascended back to heaven. He knows without a doubt that Jesus is the Messiah. Two, he's been filled with the Spirit. And, and three, he's continuing to see amazing things happen um, in believers and people who don't know Jesus yet so they're seeing people healed still seeing people healed and um, set free so he's totally transformed and he's not even afraid of um, going to prison or death in the story um, we find out that what John's brother James has just been killed and so even though that's happened he's still boldly preaching of Jesus. So as we te can tell from the story Peter has been arrested and he's now in prison but he doesn't give up hope and neither does the early church and we can tell that because it says in verse 5 that the church prayed very earnestly. I looked up the word earnestly in the dictionary and it said that it means intense, serious and sincere. So they were totally going for it in terms of praying for Peter and hoping that they would see um, God set him free. They believed that God could do that. Um, I reckon it would have been pretty noisy, pretty passionate and pretty non-stop if you were in that room with them where they were praying. Uh, Peter totally trusted Jesus. He had hope in him. He had faith that God would be the one who could set him free and he was completely at peace. We can tell that he's completely at peace because he has fallen asleep the night before his trial, chained up between two soldiers. Somehow he's managed to fall so deeply asleep that even when the angel appears in the cell with him um, and there's like this massive bright light that would totally have waken, woken me up, doesn't even make him blink. So the angel has to strike him on the side to 
bring him round and and make him alert to what is going on. I love that instantly his chains fell off him and he could get up and um, so good. I love that the angel before Peter left the cell made sure that he had everything that he needed with him, his sandals and then his coat. I think this just shows that um, the angel knew that Peter would not be going back there. I also love that the angel stayed with Peter until he knew that he was completely safe and out of any danger. So they'd got past each gate and each set of guards before the angel disappeared. And at that point, and only then, uh, Peter beca began to realise that actually this wasn't a dream, it wasn't a vision, it had actually happened. And I bet he just couldn't believe it. God had done this incredible thing to set him free and get him out of danger. Amazing. You know, Jesus loves to set people free. Uh, I'm guessing that none of you right now are actually in prison. But sometimes we can um, get feel like we are trapped. Sometimes we can feel like we are held back. Or we can feel that we've got tangled up in things and can't see a way out. And I know that Jesus wants to bring freedom to people who feel like that. And I know that he can. Can I encourage you, if you are feeling any of those things, to speak to someone? Maybe a grown-up in your house or a friend that you trust. Um, I'd really encourage you to bring those things to Jesus if you are feeling like that. And it would be really good to get someone to pray with you as well. Um, so um, just remember that Jesus loves to set people free. Maybe you want to have a go at one of the crafts. I was wondering if you might like to make a smile stone and then maybe put the word decorate it and put the word free or hope on there. It's really good to see you. Thank you so much for joining us and um, we'll see you soon. Bye.